Submix send effects give us a lot of control over how effects are applied to our sounds. The difference between these and source effects, or standard submix effects, is that we are retaining the original source sound, but also sending a specific amount of this to the submix effect bus. This allows us to control the blend of the original source and the affected sound. This is typically used for time-based effects like reverb or delays, where we want to have the effect, but also retain the clarity of the original source. Submix send effects can be used on sound waves, sound cues, ambient sound actors, sound source buses, and attenuation assets. Looking at the range of submix effect presets, so if we right click, sounds, effects, submix effect presets, we typically use the dynamics, filter, and EQ as submix effects. This is where the whole sound is rooted to the bus and affected as described in the previous video. For submix send effects, we'd typically be using the reverbs and the delays. We'll be looking at the convolution reverb in its own video later on. Let's start with the simplest application of a submix send effect, where we're sending a fixed amount of the sound source to the submix effect bus. In the Magic Forest area, that's shortcut key four in the demonstration project, we want to make the one-shot ambient sounds a bit more spooky and mysterious, and nothing says spooky and mysterious better than a bit of reverb. Rather than using the audio volumes and their reverb function, using a submix send allows us to specify different types of reverb, control more easily which sounds are sent to the reverb, and to control the amount of signal sent. For the time being, I've switched off the magpie and owl sounds in this area, I've turned the auto activate to be false. We'll be coming back to look at those a little bit later on. So we're just gonna play this area and hear the one shots as they are. You might remember I've got a keyboard shortcut here, number pad three, that's gonna allow me to just focus on the one shots and mute everything else. So I'm gonna press that now. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create a new submix. So mix, sound submix. I'm going to call it Magic Forest Creatures. Then I'm going to add a submix effect. I'm going to use the reverb. I'm going to call that Magic Forest Creatures Reverb and then assign that effect to the submix. So add element, search for magic, magic forest creatures reverb. So editing that submix effect preset, I've actually saved the settings that I wanted. So I'm just going to copy and paste those in. So now I've got a submix with that submix effect preset assigned to it, I need to send my sounds to that submix. Now just finding some of those sounds here in the world outliner, for example, this one here, if these had their own local attenuation, in other words, if they were overriding the attenuation, I'd actually be able to set the submix send within the ambient sound actor itself here by enabling submix send. But in the case of these four ambient sound actors, they're actually all referring to this magic forest creatures attenuation asset. So actually it's quicker and easier to apply the submix send settings using this, since then it will apply to all of them. So we're gonna double click on that to edit it. And here we can see the submix send is enabled and we can choose that magic forest creatures sound submix. Now the method we're going to use here is manual, and that sends a fixed amount of the sound signal to the submix. In this manual mode, the only value you need to worry about here is this manual submix send level. We're gonna leave that at one for the minute. So now all four of those creatures are sending their signals to this submix, which has 
this submix effect preset applied. So if we go back to the game, we should now hear those sounds have got some reverb on them. We'll just turn off those area loops and we'll also turn off that one shot wind sound so we can hear them a bit more clearly. So we'll mute that. Now it's always good to A, B when we're applying effects. In other words, we're going to hear it without the effect and with the effect to see if it's having the difference that we really want. So let's go back to our submix. We'll just clear that so we're hearing just the dry versions. And then we'll apply that magic forest creatures reverb again. Okay, so I think that's an improvement. Um, I think it's a bit much, so we're sending too much of the signal to that reverb. So I'm going to change that to 0 0.2. And then we're going to reapply that area loop, the wind that was playing, so we can hear it in context. So in that instance, all those creatures were using this attenuation asset, so it made sense to use the submix send settings here, but we could have also applied them, as I mentioned before, to the ambient sound actors themselves, if they were overriding attenuation, or in fact to the sound cues, you can see down here, we have the same ability to send the sounds either directly to a submix or to use a submix send. So I mentioned before the owl and the magpie sounds in this area and how we're going to treat them a little bit differently. So let's just have a look at the owl. So in this ambient sound actor, you can see that this is actually overriding attenuation here. But let's just have a look at those attenuation settings. So attenuation distance, its inner radius is 550 and it falls off to 3700. Now what I'd like to do is to have the reverb on this sound reflect the kind of wet, dry mix you get of reverb as you get further away from a sound source. If we're close to a sound source, we're hearing the direct sound from that source and a little bit of the reverb that might be reaching our ears reflected from things around the source. And as we move away, what we're going to be getting is much more of that reverb sound and much less of the direct sound. So if we could get our reverb to actually change over distance, we could reflect that phenomenon in the game and make it feel more realistic. So in the ambient sound actor, I'm going to scroll down and see the enable submix send is checked. And let's have a look at the submix settings. Now this time, our submix send method is not manual, we're not sending a fixed amount to the sound effect submix. Instead, we're using a linear method. So that linear method is going to go from this min send distance, 550, and at that distance, it's going to send this amount to the submix, a very small amount. And then as we move out to this submix max send distance of 3700, then the submix send level is going to go up to one. So as we move away, from that sound source, the amount of reverb in this case is going to increase. So let's just have a look at that owl submix. As you can see, we've got some reverb applied. So I'm just going to find that owl sound cue in our content browser and just change the delay settings so we can audition it more easily. We don't have to sit here for 20 minutes trying to listen to the owl sounds. Um, and then I'm going to make sure that I switch that back on. So you might remember in the previous demonstration, I turned the owl and the magpie off. So I'm going to turn auto activate back on. So in the game, when we're within the inner radius of the sound here, which is 550, I've actually set the submix min send distance to the same. So when we're within that radius, it's going to be sending 0 0.05 to the submix. Just make that bring that down even more to make it a bit more obvious. And then as we go out to the fall off distance, the extents of that sound itself when it falls to silence, again, I've used that setting 
to set this submix max send distance of 3700. And at that point, we'll be sending the submix max send level of 1 to the submix. So we should hear that reverb getting wetter as we get further away from the sound source. So I'm going to isolate that sound. So there are the, there's the owl. And we're up close to it. So we've got a lot of that dry signal and just a little bit of that reverb from the submix. And as we move away, you can hear that we're hearing more of the reverb. And it feels much more like it would actually feel in the real world. The final sound we're going to look at in the Magic Forest area is the magpie. And this ambient sound actor is overriding attenuation, so you can see here it's being set locally. But I'm not going to use those settings to control the send to my submix because I want a slightly more unusual effect. So down in attenuation submix send, I'm going to enable that. I'm going to send it to the same submix, so the owl's submix, to get that reverb on it. This time I'm not going to send a fixed amount using the manual method, and I'm not going to send an amount that has a linear change over distance. I'm going to set up a custom curve. So double clicking here, I can set my first point on the curve. So this says time, but effectively, its distance. So when we're right up against the magpies, let's set the value of 0.02. And then over here, I'm going to make this a thousand units away from the magpie. We're going to come up to a value of one and just zoom out so we can see that more clearly. Now, this I could achieve with a linear method, but actually, what I want is for this to have a curve over distance like this. If you want to check distances, it's always useful to go to the top down perspective and use the middle mouse button to drag out. So there you can see that's about a thousand units. So quite close to the magpie, we're going to get a lot of that signal being sent to the reverb already. Let's just find the magpie here in the content browser. And for audition purposes, I'm going to change that delay. We don't often hear the magpie. We've got a delay min of 8 seconds and a delay max of 22. So we're just going to change that so we can hear it more clearly. And I'm going to edit the volume multiplier of the ambient sound actor as well, because normally it's quite quiet. OK, going back to perspective view. Let's see how that sounds. Going to solo the magpie. So already we're starting to send that signal to that effect submix. So we get that nice spooky effect. In this video, we've seen how you can send varying amounts of a sound's signal to a submix using various submix send methods. Sending a fixed amount using a manual method, controlling the send level in a linear way over distance using the linear method, or through a bespoke approach using custom curves.